From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon, I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our Monday forecast, plus tourism in Wyoming takes a hit with this fall's massive elk fire. But first, our top story. In Montana, more than 90,000 Montanans already returned their ballots. That is more than 17% of ballots sent out. Montanans will also elect the state's next governor with Republican Greg Gianforte and Democratic opponent Ryan Bussey making their case to voters. I, it, it'll be the beginning of the legislative session. Uh, I'll do the same thing I did last legislative session. I meet with the Democrat leadership and I meet with the Republican leadership uh, to put our cards on the table. And because I think everyone needs to have a voice at the table. Uh, I'm about building consensus and finding a path forward that's right for Montana. Yeah, one of the first things we're going to do is call for the property taxes to be rolled back. It requires a governor to lead and then it requires him to bring in legislators who want to fix this because they have to pass his proposed budget. So we're going to make sure that we roll back these property taxes to the rates that um, don't involve this egregious jacking up of everybody's taxes. And that is just a small portion of two interviews with both candidates. We'll have our full conversations with Governor Greg Gianforte and Ryan Bussey right here on this MTN station Tuesday night from 6 to 7. Make sure to join us for America Votes, Montana's race for governor. And then make sure to join us again on Wednesday night from 6 to 7 as we preview Montana's Senate race between John Tester and Tim Sheehy. And this noon, we have a closer look at where the U.S. Senate candidates stand on the future of education. MTN's Megan Elaine reports. Education is a hot topic in this year's senatorial race. At the annual celebration of education in Bozeman on Thursday night, Senator John Tester spoke to educators. So if you want to see what's wrong with public education right now, it's the fact that the people who make the biggest difference in your life, we're paying salaries that, quite frankly, they could almost do anything else and make as much money. That, by the way, is ridiculous. The notion of underpaid teachers is a concept Tim Sheehy, the Republican challenger, agrees with. This is Sheehy speaking about the topic at a Montana PBS debate earlier this year. In Montana, we're not the last best place for teachers. We're the least paid place for teachers. And that continues to happen year after year after year. Senator Tester knows that all too well. According to the State Office of Public Instruction, or OPI, roughly 150,000 children attend public schools in Montana. Kids Count data shows 89.6% of students in kindergarten through 12th grade attend public schools in Montana. She, he says government should step away from education. It's about time we get the federal government out of our classrooms. Our classrooms, our curriculum, our education should start with the family, should start with our community, not from D.C. Data from OPI shows that federal money accounts for 12% of funding per public school student. The Department of Education, uh, like so many of, other, of our other federal bureaucracies, has become bloated massively overfunded uh, at the D.C. level, and the actual impacts of that funding are not moving it down to the level where they actually matter. We're Tester strongly opposes privatizing education. The fact that this dude wants to abolish the Department of Education, and you think that's going to make things better? Really? No, I'm going to tell you what it's going to do. It's going to make it so only rich people's kids get educated in this country. Yeah. It's going to make it so that schools can say... Yeah. This exact, who said that, amen? I did. Ah, can I hear an amen? Ah, it's going to make it so that they can pick and choose who they want. As a former teacher, Tester went on to say, So if you've got a, a kid that may have a stutter, nah, we're not going to deal with that. If you got a kid that's missing three fingers on his left hand, nah, we're not going to deal with that. I've never seen anything so anti or heard anything so anti American in my life. To learn more about where the candidates stand on this issue, be sure to tune in right here Wednesday night at 6 p.m. for a special America Votes Montana's Race for the U.S. Senate. In Bozeman, Megan Elaine, MTN News. I hope everybody had.
had an awesome weekend. Now back at it we go. Our local forecast coming up. But first, what's going on across the U.S. today? Headlines for the 48s. Central and Southern Plains, lingering scattered thunderstorm activity possible today. In the Northwest, cool and rainy. And the Northern Tier, spreading south, uh, we'll see a well above average temperatures. Some of us, especially uh, in Central and Eastern and Southern Montana, down into Northern Wyoming, we definitely have some uh, well above average temperatures temperatures today with 70s and maybe even knocking on the door of 80. But that's going to change a cold front winding its way through the region to knock those temperatures down as we get into tomorrow. We'll take a look at that with the forecast coming up. The Elk Fire has caused immense damage in northern Wyoming right in the midst of fall tourism and hunting season. Most lodges closing their doors, but one does remain open. MTN's Mac Carmack has the story. In the snowy mountains of Sheridan County, it can be hard to believe that a resort is open in the midst of the elk fire. However, the Bear Lodge Resort has decided to reopen their doors in hopes of rebuilding the business they've lost because of the fire. Mid-October usually means one thing for many in the region. So October is hunting season, so um, that can be pretty busy. Unfortunately, the fire kind of coincided with the bulk of that business. At the Bear Lodge Resort, one of their busiest times of year is early October. But the almost three-week elk fire has caused the resort to lose a huge chunk of their business. And so there's been a little bit of activity, nothing like it would normally be, but enough that we want people to know that if there's a need, uh, somebody's here to help out. Now that the first snow has fallen, the Bear Lodge Resort is able to reopen their doors in hope of rebuilding some of that business. Seeing nobody up here is weird. It's pretty sad this parking lot should be full. Jeff and Brady Tracy are hunters in the area. They say every weekend during hunting season, they visit the resort and was super sad to see it close this month. And I feed my family by yeah. wildlife. A lot of people don't realize that hunting is, you know, it's not just a sport, it's you're actually bringing home food. The fire hasn't only impacted the hunters, but the employees of the resort as well. Oh, we actually all live here okay. at the lodge, so that's why uh, the fire was particularly difficult for us. Saturday officially marked their soft reopening. Scott Jorgensen, one of the owners of the resort, says it can be hard trying to predict a business at a time where hunting season is supposed to be in its peak. And so we've kind of just done a, a very limited crew soft opening so that we could at least service uh, anybody who was going to come up to check things out. The crew is trying to stay positive, hoping the snow comes soon for another booming season. And so we had a pretty good lunch, and I don't know, we'll see where it goes. In Sheridan County, Matt Carmack, MTN News.